Hi there. My name is Ron Rogers. And First kayak around the lake. I want to tell you about Crystal There's Lake, my Illinois. House. <laughs> my house used to be a hotel on that site. There were two other hotels on uh, Crystal Lake property. And we also had Al Capone's um, brothel. And I'll show you where that is. And is there a steam locomotive at the bottom of the lake? Well, off to my right is about one of the deepest parts of the lake. It goes down to about 40 feet. But, um, well, there is no locomotive down there, I have been assured. People have looked for it. But, see, they used to harvest ice off of this lake. And, no, this isn't the Freddy Krueger uh, Friday 13th, probably one of the most successful series of... Um, uh, you know, horror films that started back in the 80s? No, no, it's not it. But uh, um, it is Crystal Lake, Illinois. It's not Camp Rocks Crystal Lake. getting in. But uh, this was one of the first nice days. Uh, the kayakers had already been out. I'm getting my dock in. And uh, there's a few people out. So I decided I'm going to go kayaking too. So the water is just beautiful. The wind was calm. We've got some big storms uh, coming today, but the wind was just calm. The water is beautiful. You know, it's very shallow uh, on our side. Now we're on North Shore, and North Shore uh, is actually the better side. Don't tell that to people in, in, in Lakewood. Now I know there's about three people interested in this video, I'm pretty sure. Me, my wife, but she says she, she never watches my videos, and, and then maybe one other person. But anyway, this is a little tour around Crystal Lake, and hopefully you'll enjoy it. And I'll point out some interesting Normally I do this at 5 miles an hour, and I'm 4.9. But we'll see if I can were. make it the almost 4 miles around, since I haven't done this for 5 months. Yeah, because the lake was frozen. Actually, it was frozen for only like 2 weeks, which is one of the shortest periods ever the lake has been frozen now all oh, that house up there on the left that belongs to a southwest pilot i've, I've been told I, I haven't actually met him that uh, i'm aware of but um there's quite a few uh airline pilots actually living on the lake i being one i'm retired i probably have the smallest house of any airline uh pilots living on the lake they that's a beautiful big house there uh, and there's a there's a couple uh, more houses around here, but this is just a great lake to kayak on, uh, to just have a lot of fun on. Um, there uh, are just tons of boats on it. Um, we've had a weed problem, so they've raised the boat fees to take care of it. But uh, uh, when it's early in the season or during what's known as no wake hours, you know, we had the mayor of the city one time lived on Crystal Lake and. He got into a fight with Lakewood, and one time uh, the fight got so bad that they put buoys down the center of the lake to divide it. So uh, you could generate wake on the Lakewood side, but you couldn't generate wake on the uh, Crystal Lake side. You talked a bunch of just silly arguments. Now we're coming on what is the main part of what's known as the Clough subdivision. This is the oldest part of Crystal Lake. Now this lake goes back 10,000 years. Um, I've, I've not been here that long, of course. But uh, it's a spring-fed lake, which is very interesting. As you're wading out in the summertime, the water can be reasonably warm and you get some really cold spots where the, uh, the springs are. But the Clough subdivision, uh, actually they plot, platted uh, the lots out into the lake so and I'm part of that subdivision so we own about 75 feet of the water as it were and uh, you know I talked about the politics the land grabs uh, the park district likes to own everything and they were able to get a claim deed uh, through some subterfuge uh, and they own the bottom of the lake okay they own 95 percent of it they don't own my 75 feet are all these people so i like to bring it to their attention when they talk about they own the lake that i go no you don't you don't own my part you only own 95 percent so you can't tell me about my dock i mean the city could because uh, it's you know the uh, under the city codes but the park district can you know it's like politics everybody wants to get in power well the cloud subdivision um of houses down here on the east end of crystal lake uh, 
the, the rich people would come up here and they would have a summer cottage. So these houses were built not for the winter, not insulated, anything like that. Um, so when it would get to be uh, cold, they would board them up and they'd go back to town. The really rich people went up, of course, and had the huge houses on, uh, on uh, Lake Geneva. But uh, this area down here is quite shallow. You can probably see the bottom there. You can actually walk out a good 300 feet and your, your uh, waist can be out of the water. But uh, anyway, people will buy these cottages. There's still a few of the original ones there. In fact, one of my neighbors still has an original cottage. But they will buy these cottages and then they'll tear them down, tear down, so that can get quite expensive, and then they'll build a real nice house. But anyway, uh, this is my first time out, and usually I can kayak at an average speed around the lake, the almost four mile distance at uh, five miles per hour, but it takes me a good month to get my um, upper body arms for kayaking uh, back. I, you know, I, I do free weights and I do boxing, so that helps a little bit, but uh, the, uh, the overall speed when I first come out is just a little bit down. But this is one of the absolutely beautiful days. Uh, they, they would get into fights about wake and no wake, and it looks. And for the longest time, things went fairly smoothly. But it looks like that's coming back. Now you see that little bit of a white house, yeah, right there. Uh, we call it uh, Terra, like from Gone from the Wind. Um, it, it's actually got quite a facade. It's not as big as it looks. It's kind of funny. It's got a couple of wings there. But there used to be a hotel there. Crystal Lake had three hotels. That was one. There's another one that was right next to Main Beach coming up here. And my house was a hotel. It was called the Lake House. And I've got a picture from 1910 taken um, looking back onto the house from the lake. And they've got women in full length uh, dresses out there and a few sailboats and stuff like that. And it's kind of interesting. The um, the house actually burnt down in the late 70s, and um, I used to drive by here. I had a friend who lived on Crystal Lake, an airline pilot, and I would drive by this uh, the site here, and they were actually building a house. No idea that I would eventually own it. Uh, I bought it in uh, 1998, and I've been there ever since, the longest place I've ever lived in one spot. Well, that was because of... Uh, you know, uh, the Air Force and a little bit of airlines. But once I got uh, uh, past my probation and furlough and all that stuff, I, I put down roots here because the schools are great at Crystal Lake and our kids grew up and we've got our friends and everything. And so we, we have stayed. Now you see that brown building off the nose there? That is Main Beach. And that building is actually quite old. They renovated it a few times, but they will have concerts here on Crystal Lake Tuesday nights during the summer. And I take my pontoon boat, I've got a grill on it, and we beach it uh, there. There's a little concert uh, shell. And we beach it, and I cook barbecue dinner, and uh, we, uh, we listen to the music and have adult beverages. And the, uh, you can just see it off to the side there, that little bit of a house there. Um, yeah, there it is. That was, yeah, there it is a little bit better. That was a, um, uh, had been a hotel. It was uh, refurbished. And I'm going by the lifts here. This part will get so shallow that they have to take the lifts and move them out into the lake. And so they ended up uh, end up either waiting out uh, or uh, having a little uh, uh, you know a little kayak or something to get out. And there's two places to launch boats on Crystal Lake. One here at Main Beach, but it's a little more shallow. I go to West Beach, uh, which you'll see when we come around. But Main Beach, they've got the beach area there, and it's early in the season, so it's not out yet. But uh, they have all sorts of swim areas and swim instructions. And you see the, um, uh, the main beach facility there and that little white thing off to the side. We'll get a little closer to it. That is the boathouse. They uh, recently upgraded that very nicely. And they rent kayaks and paddle boats and also sailboats too. And they'll actually have uh, sailing instruction. Oh, that's the Park District's pontoon boat there. They uh, recently upgraded that. There's the, the main um, beach area. They've got uh, kind of a big center in there where they have exercise classes and, and uh, various events. Uh, I think people have had receptions there. And there's the other side of the beach. 
uh, of Main Beach where they've got some playground stuff. And you can also uh, play out there. Now they also have for, for people who like to fish, and uh, there's there's great fishing on Crystal Lake. Um, they stock it. It's uh, Crystal Lake, by the way. It's a good lake. It's not a great lake. Fishing. Okay. It's uh, about a mile long, half mile wide, 225 acres. But there's the uh, there's the boathouse coming up there. Now, as I mentioned, the boathouse, they've got a lot of kayaks, they've got sailboats, they've got paddle boats, and actually uh, they have sailing lessons. My youngest son took sailing lessons uh, through the park district, so that's kind of cool. And they've got some various piers there. They've got a fishing pier that you can come out and fish because uh, um, there's a group that stocks the lake with fish. Um, and uh, we get a lot of fishing activity. There's everything on there. It ranges from fishing, kayaking, uh, sailboat, uh, pontoons, ski boats. Um, we have the wake boats, which I absolutely hate because they generate like a two-foot wake. And... And the only time I've come near to being swamped is uh, when a, a wake boat came very near me. And they have um, this cordon off wake and no wake, but it's deeper on this side, so the, the wake, the no wake area is much smaller and it gets pretty tight. And I'll show you that about some of the uh, areas. Now, uh, they have fireworks every 4th of July, and they have this barge, and they fill it full of uh, fireworks and shoot it off. It's very cool. Uh, you see a couple of girls there. Um, I think they hear the noise of the kayak, but they don't look over a wave or anything because at um, 73, I'm totally invisible to any woman uh, younger than uh, 30. So um, I can actually kayak around totally unobserved, very stealthy. Um, but anyway, I digress. I usually don't digress on paddling. But okay, we're coming up to Lakewood. Now, Lakewood, um, that is the. Um, richer but less desirable side I will say because on the North Shore um, you've got a higher sun angle in the summer you've got a lower sun angle in the winter so your windows face south and you get more sun and in the winter when the wind blows cold out of the north that is the side of the houses uh, that don't have many windows um, so it's easier to, to heat one mile in 13 minutes 31 seconds yeah really moving there so, uh, yeah, it gets a little cold here, but like I said, we had our shortest ice season of only like two weeks because uh, my neighbors like, they've got young kids and they like to uh, uh, little, uh, cordon off a uh, skiing area and we get the snowmobiles on the lake, we get the cross-country skiers and stuff, so everybody comes out. Oh, here's another area where um, it's a group of people who own a small section of the lake, they get together and they have an association and um, you get on the list and you get your boat there. Um, sometimes it's like a three or four year list. I've known people got their name on the list and all of a sudden they get told, we have a slip for you and they go, well, I better go out and buy a boat. So anyway, I'm uh, digressing all over the place here, but that's what happens when these various things come up. So here we have the uh, South Shore Homes, uh, which is in Lakewood. And uh, they have some very beautiful homes down here. Since this area was essentially not developed, not developed um, until much later, uh, it was fairly clear. And uh, most of these houses are big and brand new and all sorts of stuff. And there's another airline pilot. We'll come up into it a little bit. I don't know if I get a good view of it, but uh, he built a very nice house very beautiful house and then some people came along and just gutted the thing and doubled it in size it was already a huge house the, uh, the house he had was much bigger than mine and they just doubled it so um, yeah it's big and here's some other piers you know the people are getting them in their docks and that and uh, um, but the boats still have yet to come because it's still cool and uh, this was a nice 70 in fact it got up to 80 degrees it was almost hot uh, but we got some cool weather coming because this is it, this is not typical of uh, of the area. But uh, it is a very nice uh, bit of kayaking around. It's very it's very beautiful. 
and uh, the uh, uh, here's some more um, dock areas and we have uh, some more uh, they're, they're private association beaches some of them are a little bit larger uh, than others and, and they uh, put swim areas out here but because this side of the lake is deeper the distance between the um, wake and no wake gets a lot tighter and it gets uh, a little more touchy because the uh, the speedboats come up against you now the circulation around the lake is uh, counterclockwise and i'm going clockwise because i like to see who's about to run over me uh, not that people indulge in alcoholic beverages while they're boating, but I'm not taking a chance. Now, see, there's a, a um, that buoy over there. That's a swim area over there. And then there's the um, wake buoy over there. So, see, it's kind of narrow here. And, in fact, we're coming up on one that actually... That's it, a narrow it, swim area. Yeah, narrow. Well, the, uh, their buoy has kind of gotten away from them. It's not a two-foot wide swim area. Uh, they need to work on that. They must not have got it secured very well. But uh, that tends to be a very active uh, position, uh, uh, oh, a swimming area. And uh, coming up here, uh, the, the lake actually kind of narrows down just a little bit. There's a little point, and I'll show you that because a, uh, do a family of doctors has bought that end point. And they own the whole thing out there, and they have a nice little park area. And uh, there is uh, another one of the uh, uh, beach areas, I believe, off to the side. Just hear how still and peaceful it is. Well, one thing they used to do in the winter, uh, they actually had railroad tracks that came down to the lake. And they had the Dole Mansion. The Dole family um, had... Uh, a mansion on the lake. It's just off the lake, but uh, you know, very ritzy. Uh, the Dole Pineapple people, and uh, they uh, actually had a train spur that came out to it. Originally, it was used for um, harvesting the ice. They would they would come out here and they would harvest the ice off the lake and then ship it into Chicago on the train tracks. And at this far in there, they had a three-story tall building where they stored the ice. The thing was really, uh, really immense. It's it's amazing what's been on this lake and. Uh, what has gone away. Of course, um, a lot of the old houses that were here have been torn down and uh, rebuilt uh, with much nicer. And the house on the left has an interesting history to it. Uh, I think it was back in the 60s they had a flu vent that became obstructed in three people um, to come to carbon monoxide uh, in the evening. Um, I haven't heard any tales of it's haunted or anything, but it's well known that the people living there uh, died, unfortunately, uh, due to that situation. Now we're coming up here on the left there. That's another, uh, that's a United Airlines pilot. Yep, right there. Uh, Carl's house. Very nice house. I think he's retired now, uh, but he's got a nice dock there with a bunch of little toys. And uh, um, he and his wife are into skiing. Uh, and they actually have a track that comes out of a garage uh, in the house and they keep their ski boat in there and then they just they can actually roll it out on the tracks into the lake. And there's a mooring buoy. Uh, you can uh, moor your boat out there. Um, might belong to uh, it, yeah, about that. Well, the park district is trying to control this and they say you got to live on the lake to moor a boat there but uh, back when I was first um, thinking about getting something a friend of mine who's a airline pilot says um, well if you get a jet ski you can keep it at my place I was looking at a boat and it'll have to you know, trailer it and store it somewhere, and that wasn't going to be too much fun. So um, I thought, well, if I get a jet ski, I can put it to his place. So uh, he had a little side bet uh, with a uh, mutual friend of ours who was an airline pilot. Uh, there's another swim area there. Uh, who's an airline pilot, and uh, Fred bet the other guy that in four years, I would either own a house on the lake or I would sell him the jet ski cheap. 
and it ended up uh, I had a house on the lake. It was kind of funny because uh, we looked at one on the the uh, the west end here, and that's the shallow end with tons of weed. And I'm so glad we didn't buy a house there. They're, they've got a device now that'll harvest the weed, so it, it should be better this year. We'll wait and see, but I don't even kayak in that section because the weeds are just so bad. You pull up all sorts of crud with your paddles, and it, it really fouls the propellers too. So the whole area is just avoided. Um, but hopefully, you know, they raise the rates for the boat rentals, and uh, there's another boat uh, docking place. But they raise the rates for the boat rentals, so now hopefully um, they can afford to um, get the weeds out more. But boy, do those things uh, come back um, uh, very fast, unfortunately. But um, uh, I looked at that house, and now uh, we didn't like it. It was small and dark, and the uh, um, realtor said, well, do you want to look at other houses? So we started looking at other houses. It's kind of funny. You know, they say in real estate, you don't want the owner of the house to be there uh, when you're showing it. But the guy who owned the house, um, he and I really struck it off well. We, uh, uh, he, he was showing me how well it's built, and it is really well built. The, the walls uh, downstairs are 18 inches thick, and the thing is just overbuilt. Uh, it is. It's, it's a really amazing, solid house. And we just kind of bonded. And so uh, uh, he gave me a good deal. In fact, he told me um, that he had turned down an offer $60,000 more than mine just a few years ago. Um, so what had happened was uh, the mayor sold his house. The one who got into a fight with uh, the Lakewood people, uh, the Crystal Lake mayor, he sold his house and he got way above market. Somebody from the outside came in. The realtor didn't do a good job of telling him that, hey, you're overpaying for this house. So everybody thought they could get that house. And there's the old saying in real estate, you know, if you overprice your house, if you overprice your house, you will eventually sell it for less than what you would have gotten because it'll stay on the market a long time. It'll get a bad reputation. People think there's something wrong with the house. And that's kind of what happened in this case. It was on the market for two and a half years. Uh, the funny thing about um, uh, the, the Crystal Lake market uh, on the lake is that a lot of houses change hands and they never come on the market. It's, it's amazing uh, what happens because all of a sudden there'll be uh, like uh, just right now there's a house down the road and I've got a lot of the little cottages still kind of in, in the line of, of my row very close to me and suddenly this house is, is gone and I don't even remember what it looks like. <laughs> That's what's funny. So that's one nice thing to have this video because like, maybe I got a chance to remember what some of these houses were like. But all of a sudden it's gone. They're putting in the foundation. And the, the trouble, and I had this in my house too, uh, the trouble is there are springs under the house. So they come in there, they tear out the house. They're, they're digging a foundation. You know, building codes are different now. you you got to have... Uh, a decent foundation. Uh, putting in a basement is kind of ridiculous. Mine's a walkout. Uh, but putting in a basement, you just can't do it because you dig a foundation, immediately it fills with water. So uh, they have to put all this gravel, I mean, not gravel, huge rock, and they have to do special drainage, and uh, uh, it's amazing. They have to pump it out uh, so they can put in the forms. Yeah. Um, they, uh, they came through on North Shore with a $2 million project where they, they put in a bunch of, of drainage in that, and it lowered the water level five feet. My sun pumps used to run every 45 seconds, 4,000 gallon sun pumps, every 45 seconds, uh, they would run year round. And, and my grass, I had to actually um, essentially uh, have some big troughs put in there full of rock just to drain it because anytime you go out there and here I'm going through the one of the sp swim areas that actually comes out a little too far and it really kind of pinches off and I'll show you that when we line up the buoys here but um, yeah the um, um, as I was mentioning the sump pumps ran year round and since they put in that uh, drainage stuff. Um, they lowered the uh, level five feet and haven't had a problem. I'm actually surprised that so much water came into that other site, that house they were digging next to mine, when, um, you know, they, uh, they had lowered it because my sump pumps run a lot less now. And just doing a little spin on the, uh, the no-wake buoy here. You can't actually see 
um, well enough that the uh, swim area protrudes out into the wake area, but it does. So somebody's going to have to do something about that because you don't want to get your head hit. Oh, look at that right off the nose. That, um, that belonged to a contractor, that house. And I think he's just doing an add-on uh, di uh, division, addition. That happens uh, actually quite a bit. But we're coming up on uh, West Beach here, and West Beach is another area um, uh, that uh, has a swim area, and it's got a nice building there. They can have some various activities in there. Um, they also have a uh, boat launch area, another one of these 50 foot wide things where they got boats, and uh, you can put your pontoon there if you're part of that association. They have uh, gosh, I don't know how many associations are all the way around the, the lake. And sometimes they're there for boats, sometimes they're there with a swim area. We actually have a, um, a association that's got a, a nice wide area. They've got picnic uh, tables. There. There's the West, Main, uh, West Beach building. They've got picnic tables, and uh, it's really nice. Uh, it's right across from the bar Moby Dick's. We have a uh, we have a bar on our shore, and um, yeah, this uh, this area is right across from their nice little uh, neighborhood gathering. There is the uh, the beach area of West Beach, and a lot of people take their boats and they'll just dock them there, um, and uh, just have a fun time visiting and stuff like that. It's a very it's a very friendly uh, lake. There'll be tie ups on the lake uh, where you get all your boats uh, tied up together. And uh, we did that a little bit. My wife doesn't like it because um, if she has to go to the bathroom, our boat's stuck in the center, and that's kind of a problem. But uh, anyway, I digress again. But uh, the, uh, this is the West Beach area that they, they do a lot of ice fishing out here. Uh, I guess because of the weeds, which uh, get in the way uh, if you're kayaking or if you're boating. They just totally uh, get in the way of the paddles, and they just clog up. Uh, the props, you have to reverse the thing because you'll just suddenly just mull down because you've got uh, your prop is totally covered in weeds. And um, you know, we, we first looked at a house on the west end here, and it um, uh, it, uh, it wasn't very nice. It was dark and it was small, but uh, we ended up buying ours on the uh, the North Shore um, in the center there uh, from a gentleman who we uh, kind of bonded with. It was a, we had a, a, a real nice event. You know, they say don't um, don't have the person who owns the house there when you're showing it, but actually it helps sell it uh, because he um, really sold me on how well the house was constructed and it was built like a tank. Uh, the basement walls are 18 inches thick and it is just super well insulated and uh, it was funny. Um, when I was having the inspection, uh, the inspector opened the window and closed it. When he closed it, uh, there had been some noise outside and it just got silent and he goes, Wow, this is really well insulated. But here's the West End, and these houses were, um, you know, it's not as popular of an area because of the weeds, so they're a little slower in, in getting converted and changed over uh, to nicer houses. And uh, we're going to come up to Al Capone's uh, brothel here. Um, I was inside it before it was torn down. And it was kind of interesting. We were in there with a the realtor, not as a customer or anything. We are in there with a the realtor. And it has a great room uh, with a huge chandelier, fireplace, a uh, little kitchen there. And there's an upper balcony that goes around the whole room. And there are a bunch of uh, little rooms off of it. And supposedly the women would come out and the patrons would choose who they wanted, I guess, and uh, go up the, uh, the grand stairway. Now, there was also a, a bar in the basement that had terracotta all uh, around the walls and the ceiling. Uh, there was a terracotta factory in Crystal Lake uh, a long time ago, and they produced these just gorgeous, and I guess they can be, um, uh, when, when they tore down the house, I hope they saved them, because these things, I guess, would go for great prices. But, uh, yeah, we're actually headed right towards where the Al Capone house was. It um, had a kind of a vineyard there and big trees and from the lakeside you really couldn't see anything it was very secluded and supposedly there was an escape route underneath that went out somewhere but um 
you know, we didn't we didn't stay forever in the house, but I was not able to find anything that looked unfortunately like an escape route or uh, some way to get out. But uh, that would be something that you would want to, uh, of course, avoid the revenuers. And there's the house right there, the brown one. And it was uh, the area was uh, essentially three lots and um, he bought all three and he put the house on two of them and he has a nice grass base next to it which I guess people thought uh, was just public so we had to put some signs up saying you know this is this is my property stay away uh, but anyway um, that is what used to be the Al Capone house now ahead of me is the point that was uh, is owned by uh, a, a, a family of doctors and they end up buying the whole point there it sticks out we'll get a little closer towards it um, and there's still little cottages around here now as you notice the uh, panting and the uh, uh, kayaking noise has gone away I'm uh, um, still kind of new at this uh, video editing and I don't think my computer has the processing power uh, to handle a lot of these files because uh, I have to uh, stop and let it catch up which is kind of a pain but um, uh, there was a, it was funny, there was a house on to the left where uh, they never took their dock out. And these are just small tubular docks. Uh, it's kind of funny. Um, and in the winter, the ice moves, and they had a dock that looked like a roller coaster, but they would never take it out. Uh, actually, I went by this year, and I finally saw it's removed. It's probably removed because the thing was such in bad shape. But um, we had some people uh, build a house a couple houses away, and uh, one of the guys who had been on the lake, uh, I mean, forever told him, hey, you better take your dock out. And he says, oh, don't tell us, us what to do. Well, one Saturday morning, they're banging, trying to get the poles out because it's all bent. Now, that house is new within the last year, uh, built, uh, nice and uh, big. Watch that uh, uh, construction go up. It's amazing how long it takes to get a house built on the lake. I mean, just going through all the uh, rigmarole of getting through um, the building department and stuff like that. And, oh, my friend uh, who used to live on the lake, the guy who I kept the jet ski at, oh, my gosh, did he have issues with the building department. Um, they uh, they were not very reasonable uh, for him. So, uh, yeah, that's unfortunate. But um, here we are uh, coming up on the point. There's a few people we know who uh, actually, uh, there are rental houses there. There, there. there have been a few rental houses around the lake. And um, they uh, um, have families in there, and they have their kayaks and uh, have a fun time. Um, so, but then that, that juts right up uh, to the end point here. And when we come around, uh, there was an airline pilot who used to uh, live here. Uh, you know, my, my whole thing about Illinois is come for the weather, stay for the taxes. And, of course, um, the the taxes uh, have gotten very high. It's ridiculous. I have rental property, and if it weren't, and I've got great renters that I've had for a long time, but if it weren't for the taxes, I would never have to increase their rent, and it's just ridiculous um, how much uh, they've gone up, uh, you know, eh, taxing bodies, you know, come on, give, give these poor people a break. They're just trying to get by, and yeah, anyway, I digress. All right, there's the... Uh, the end point owned by the Tiesinger family, a uh, family of doctors, and they've got a nice little uh, park area there they've, they've put out there for themselves. And, uh, um, oh, I don't know if we're, we're going to see it well, but there is one of these aqua chairs. There it is, that blue thing off the right. Uh, you got a, a, a sense of it. That has been there for at least a decade. It's it's just below the level of the water. It's tied to something, and it doesn't float away. I, I had a docking buoy uh, that I put out off the end of my house when the lake gets shallow. I had to move my boats out, my boat out. And uh, after two winters, that thing was gone. The ice just took it away. But we also have some, um, you know, I, I watch every winter because we got some buoys uh, that are uh, near my house uh, where one of the associations has their boats, and they leave them out year-round, and the ice hasn't uh, carted them away. It's amazing, but uh, it, it only takes one good, um, actually, melting and then windstorm, because the ice has to melt enough that it breaks up, and then the wind has to blow it. Oh, oh by the way, um, I have a hot tub. I use it year-round, and I was sitting out there one night, and I heard these really weird twang, twang-like, 
And I asked my friend, who also had a hot tub, the airline pilot, and I said, what is that? And he goes, oh, that's the ice cracking. So uh, it's kind of interesting. It, may, it makes an interesting noise, and since most people aren't setting out in the quiet um, in the evening, uh, they don't hear it. But now we're coming around, and, and off to the uh, the front there is uh, one other airline pilot who had a house. He's moved down to Florida now. Um, we were friends of him and uh, and uh, Fred, who has the house farther on down. But uh, this uh, is is an area of, of older homes again that are being uh, refurbished to an extent. There's a few cottages uh, here. Um, and uh, there was one that uh, in, I think an airline pilot and his brother or something they uh, they uh, subdivided the lot and built some houses that um, weren't the most architecturally beautiful uh, for the lake area, but they have since uh, new people have moved in there and they've spruced them up quite a bit and they look they look a lot nicer. But here we are coming back into that area, and there's uh, there's one guy down there who has a, he puts out a really big dock, and it's a really uh, it's kind of a, a, a party dock. <laughs> um, he has a lot of uh, a lot of people over all the time. But uh, this area I'm coming up, it's uh, there's a swim area that'll be off the nose, and they extend it uh, quite a ways out, and they've got a little uh, swim platform and a nice little uh, bunch of picnic tables, so they they have a fun time with that. Now, there's one of the, the, the two houses over there to the left that were not the most beautifully architecturally, and they've uh, actually um, remodeled them. Um, I don't know what they look like on the inside, but the outside is is a lot more interesting than just being a box, which is essentially what it was, and not not very attractive. But that was a, an airline pilot from Brand X, so I won't mention them or their silver airplanes or anything like that but they they have uh they sold the houses and moved on oh and we had another airline pilot in that brown house there he's moved on quite a while ago um uh it's kind of interesting they'll uh i mean it's it's a it's a like i said it's a great it's a it's a good lake it's not a great lake you know but uh anyway um i'm getting close to the end of the tour getting back home and uh, we'll come up on to Fred's house here, uh, which is really nice. He he had a house on the lake that um, uh, he moved. Uh, actually, I, I was in the house um, when it was on the lake, and then he moved it off the lake, and he sold it, um, and he, he built this house. Um, it's, it, it's, uh, it's quite interesting. It's got some... Uh, uh, I'm not going to delve into it, but there's a little secret in the house, and it was kind of funny. Um, uh, we were over for a few drinks, and uh, he, uh, he, he told me the secret of the house. And uh, then uh, later, when I uh, he casually mentioned it, and I said, "Yeah," and he was shocked that I knew about it. You got to be, uh, you got to be careful that you don't, uh, you know, you uh, you don't forget things. Uh, that right there on the left, that White House, that's where the mayor's house used to be. That, that got torn down and redone. Um, uh, he was the Crystal Lake mayor who, uh, um, caused a few issues. Now there's Fred's house there, the brown one, uh, with, the, it's a, it's a green roof that looks like it's copper, but it's a uh, little cement things. And, uh, he's got a, a 135 foot wide, uh, um, lot, which is, uh, not the standard. Most of them are all 50 feet like mine. And, uh, so he, he had a, a very nice frontage area there, very nice dock there. And, uh, just, a just a, uh, a beautiful house, but the, the taxes were getting outlandish and he, uh, he, uh, moved up to Michigan and a house on another lake up there to be near his kids and stuff. So, um, he's having fun there. He also has a, a double white out in Wyoming in the ranch and he has a just gorgeous house down at Plantation Key. And he also has, um, on the airport there, um, uh, something with a T. Uh, he's got an apartment up there above the hangar that's nice. So he's he's got a, uh, well, his wife was the local vet. So they had a, a little bit extra sources of income that uh, uh, worked out uh, well. I'd hate to do their taxes, but anyway, um, they got a few places and very nicely enjoying retirement. And there is a neighbor stock. All right, and now coming up to the end of the adventure. Yeah, the Blue House there is owned by a dentist. I see him at uh, uh, Lifetime Fitness quite often. Here is the uh, uh, area where the, uh, the one group ties up a boat 
a bunch of boats. It's called funneling where you have a 55, a 50 foot uh, wide lot and you run boats out for about 300 feet. Um, but, uh, it's easy to kayak when nobody's there and we're coming up to my house. Um, that, um, not the one with the pitched roof. Uh, he's a retired engineer. The white one there used to be actually belonged to a, uh, United Airlines pilot. And he had a ton of kids that would come over grandkids, actually kids and grandkids. He had a big family and he would come over and, uh, uh, the one next to it there. Yeah, that brown one with the white part, that uh, is uh, a neighbor who's, oh, I've had fantastic neighbors. I have the best neighbors. He um, uh, actually mows my lawn because he has a huge uh, mower that uh, was big for his, was for his other lot and he doesn't need it. So it, it gets him uh, worthwhile. Now there's my house behind the tree. Like I said, it's the smallest airline pilot house on the lake, uh, but it's plenty big for us. The kids can come back during the summer, kids and grandkids and have fun. Uh, and for the two of us, it's, uh, it's plenty big, but I hope you enjoyed the little tour there. 4.6 miles per hour. I'll get my speed up as time comes on, but thanks for watching.